now live on YouTube, starting us up on Rumble. Good afternoon, hello, and welcome to Weird Weekly Recap, aka WWR. This show is a dive into the odd, obscure, bizarre, and other words for strange world of notable events, weather, and sports. I'm A.O. Xander. King Refuge. And uh, we will be joined by the Golden Loon here soon. And of course, you are you today is Freya's Day, aka Friday, October 25th, 2024. No. So let's jump into the news today, shall we? Uh, do you want to uh, use our old uh, tried and true method? You read the headline and I read a little bit of the body? Ah, uh, Chinese man carries paralyzed mother on his back as they travel country. Wow. Awesome. A yeah, 31 year old man has been praised for his exemplary filial piety after selling his possessions to travel through China with his paralyzed mother, carrying her on his back just like she did with him when he was a baby. Um, oh. Yeah, Xiao Ma was just eight years old when his parents were involved in a terrible car accident that claimed his father's life and left his mother unable to move. He and his older sister were forced to take care of themselves as well as their mother, who was later diagnosed with cerebral atrophy as a consequence of the car accident. Uh, growing up, he worked in the fields picking cotton, was an apprentice in various fields, and opened his own restaurant in Xinjiang. Most of the money he uh, made went towards his mother's recovery, and his hard work seemed to pay off. As the woman was slowly able to leave the bed and had become, which had become her prison, to sit in a wheelchair and even take a few small steps. However, a few years ago, Zio Ma got devastating news with his mother's cerebral atrophy was not only incurable, but progressing at a steady pace. That's when he decided to make the best of the time he had left with her. So, um, you, didn't, you weren't here. Welcome uh, to the show, by the way. Thank you, Golden Loon. That's yeah. adorable. Yeah, this guy is carrying his paralyzed mother. Oh, They're traveling man. China. He's carrying her around on, on his back. This is awesome. This is <clears> awesome. <throat> you know? Yeah. So... Yeah, That's adorable. That's awesome, dude. Yeah. You know? What else do we got here? Sixty-year-old man forgets that the last thirty-nine years of his life following a hit and run. Yikes! Two-thirds of his Ooh, life really? gone. Like, whoa. Uh, so, yeah, 39 years of his 60-year-old life, so two-thirds. <laughs> Yikes, dude. An Italian man has been struggling to adjust to daily life uh, following a hit-and-run accident that put him in a coma and ultimately erased 39 years' worth of memories, including his own family. Uh, imagine living in the 1980s and then suddenly being transported to present day. Jeez. Ooh. That's that's one hell of a leap. Yeah. Yikes, dude. 51st Dates. You know, that's, that movie's secretly yeah. terrifying. Yeah. Uh, things like smartphones, self-driving cars, artificial intelligence, the internet, or social media must seem like real-life science fiction, and everyone you used to know is now either gone or much older. You know, so, I mean, that, that's absolutely nuts. So, this, this poor man. Like, I, I can't fathom, like, losing yeah. 40 years, you know, in... Just because somebody out there does not know how to drive a car. You know, now you know why I'm so freaking up a wall about cars. Like, man, this poor guy. My heart goes out to this dude. Yeah. So, and wow. his family, you know. That's All me. of a sudden you look in the mirror. God damn, I'm old, you yeah. know. <laughs> what happened? Yeah. <laughs> Who's that guy? <laughs> what else? <clears throat> oh, this one's weird. A uh, man who can't stop sniffing neighbor's shoes gets suspended prison sentence I, I don't know what's weird a shoe what? sniffer or a doorbell licker like yeah a 28 year old Greek man was recently convicted of causing a disturbance by repeatedly trespassing on his neighbors and smelling their shoes the unnamed man was arrested on October 8th after one of his neighbors in Sindos a small town about uh, 15 kilometers or 9 miles west of Thessaloniki spotted him in their yard just before dawn sniffing the shoes that they had left outside to air uh, this was not the man's first time trespassing on private property for the same bizarre reasons. The neighbor called the police. Upon hearing the 28-year-old man's explanation and the testimony of one of the neighbors, a single-membered misdemeanor, uh, misdemeanor court of Thessaloniki uh, uh, issued a suspended sentence of one month in prison within three years with three years of probation. Yeah, you know, this guy has a problem. Well, who's, well wh you know, it's a weird story, but the one sentence that just jumped out at me Left the shoes outside to air. Yeah. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> yeah. You know, maybe maybe you should get some uh, some of that yeah. sploosh, you know, from... Maybe um, he was trying to run down where the smell was coming from. <laughs> where 
where's that smell coming from? Uh, well, I mean, uh, that's uh, it's how, a weird, it's a weird hound story. dog syndrome. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, they need uh, like from that movie Holes. They need the sploosh so oh, that way geez. they can uh, they can get rid of the the horrible smell, you know, of their feet. Yeah. But yeah, no, you do make a good point. I thought about that too. I'm like, how bad do your feet must <laughs> reek? They have to put your shoes the air. outside. Yikes! <laughs> oh, uh, what else do we got here? Russian man. <clears throat> nope. <laughs> Brack was used to survive 67 days adrift in an inflatable boat. Wow. A 46-year-old Russian man was recently rescued after spending 67 days drifting through the icy waters of the Russian Far East in an inflatable Jeez. raft. On August 9th, uh, Mikhail Pikyun, his 49-year-old brother Sergey, and his 15-year-old nephew Ilya set out yeah. for uh, Sakhalin Island from the Far Eastern Kavarovsk region uh, on an inflatable raft. A few days later, their families announced their disappearance, and a search and rescue operation was mounted using planes and helicopters. All efforts to locate the inflatable boat failed, and with each passing day, hopes of finding any of the three men uh, alive faded. By September, the chances of finding the boat had plummeted toward zero, but on Monday, October 14th, the inflatable boat was spotted in the Sea of Olshok, about 1,000 kilometers or 670 miles from where it had set <coughs> off 67 days prior. Miraculously, one of the three men was still alive, so two of them did not make it. Uh, 670 miles, wow. And look, it's, it looks like a giant sleeping bag type thing. Like, yeah, that is, you know, mm. sometimes you, you just, just don't do things. You know, cause they, they weren't they weren't in some kind of wreck. They, they just they just went out. This was some kind of just whatever, you know, outing. But obviously yeah. things went bad. Went very bad. Yeah. So yeah. Two months. Over yeah. two months. Yeah. Crazy. Mm. This one is, well, they're, they're all weird. You know, we have a weekly recap. You know, all these, you, you know, so. A uh, young man goes viral for documenting his life as a kept man in Japan. A Chinese man known only by his online moniker, Sudden Fantasy, has been receiving a lot of attention online for documenting his life as a jobless man financially supported by his loving wife. Uh, Sudden Fantasy began posting videos on Douyin, Chinese version of TikTok, roughly a month ago. But he already has over 1.4 million followers on the popular social Jeez. media network, mainly because of the un unique topic he covers. The Chinese young man posts about his life as a kept man in Japan, relying exclusively on his wife for financial support. He repeatedly, uh, or he reportedly moved uh, to the neighboring co uh, country about eight years ago and went to uh, uh, date his wife, whose Chinese name is Feng Hua. After falling down on hard times, she was there for him when he needed help, putting food on the table and covering his tuition, and she eventually became his wife. Uh, despite being well-educated and uh, coming from a wealthy family, Feng Hua has no problem providing for her husband, who loves sitting around playing video games. <laughs> uh, man, this man, guy, you know, that's an angle I never considered taking, but maybe I should have. Uh, I kept man. I don't know. This guy sounds like a major loser to me. You know? Yeah. Like... <laughs> You know, stand up on your own two feet. You know, yeah, like, you know, it, it, it's nice to have somebody to lean on every now and then, but what if something happens and she needs to lean on you? You're kind of screwed now. Well, you know, the ideal situation is two people can lean on each other. If you have that, you got everything. Ah, well, this yeah. is pretty one sided here. <laughs> yeah, so, it is. Yeah, well, is. other, you know, two, uh, you know, live, they like. As live, long as she's happy, happy, I guess that's all that matters. They're both happy. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, oh, here we go. Uh, world's smallest fully functional excavator fits in the palm of your hand. What? The Nanotrax <laughs> The Nanotrax N320 is a miniature remote controlled excavator that, although only 1 64th the size of the real thing, is not a toy but a fully functioning excavator. The world's smallest excavator might be tiny, but it's certainly no joke. It features six fully independent uh, proportional motors, giving you precise control over every movement, as well as an electronic slip ring, independently controlled boom, dipper, bucket, swing, and, and individual tracks. What? You may not be able to fit in its cabin to manually operate it, but the Nanotrax N320 features extremely precise RC controls with the available modes. Uh, one offers the industry standard ISO controls, Caterpillar controls, while the second allows you to control the tracks independently, just like a real excavator. So that's a real functioning, you know, <laughs> oh, digging machine. Look at that. That is wild. 
that. That's oh. incredible. It's so small. Yeah. <laughs> oh, hold on a second. They have a video here. There you go. Introducing the Nanotrax N320, a tiny, fully functional, radio-controlled excavator. The Dude, that's so cool. That is. That's awesome. That's nice. You know, this kind of reminds me, uh, on the other side of the scale, going from little to big, but uh, cr uh, crane lifting crane. Like, uh, this is a, uh, yeah, I'm not going to play the entire thing, but uh, this is basically a commercial. So, we have here... That's obviously a toy crane, you know, okay. you can tell. Um, and it's being lifted by this crane, but uh, as it goes on, this you know, the crane that was lifting that is lifting this, and then that's being lifted by another okay, crane. Okay, so it's escalating Yeah, out, so, so let me, uh, oh. yeah, here it is. So look at this. A crane lifting a crane lifting a crane lifting <laughs> oh, that's a crane. Cool. Yeah, that's cool, uh, yeah. I, I think there was, uh, yeah, there was. There was another crane, so look at that. Whoa. Yeah. 1.430 tons. Or wow. 1,340 yeah. tons. So a crane lifting a crane lifting a crane lifting a crane lifting a crane. So. Yeah, that's cool. I crane, you crane. Wait a minute. We all scream for I crane. Yeah. Uh, oh, here we go. I, I've been wanting to, to figure out the story behind this. A uh, French couple sued by their neighbor because their rooster <laughs> crows too loudly. Oh, boy. Uh, the owner is Rico, a bantam rooster from... Uh, Bourgeois Jalio and France's Israeli department are, are scheduled to show up in court following a neighbor's complaint regarding the bird's loud crowing. Quote, difficulty concentrating, sleep deprivation, hearing fatigue, and quote, are just some of the symptoms cited by the plaintiff who summoned Rico's owners to court in January of next year. The person who prefers to remain anonymous, yeah, because you're a freaking Karen, is one of the owner's neighbors as they claim that the rooster's crowing is unbearable both at night and during the day. However, the owners of a five-year-old bird have always disputed these claims, insisting that the door to Rico's chicken coop is operated by an automated system program to open the door roughly at 8.30 in the morning uh, during the winter at 9 a.m. in the summer. They insist that the rooster crows about 15 times in a quarter of an hour in the morning and then a few more times during the day. Like, okay, well, I mean, you're going out into a rural area and there's wild animals and then you're going to complain about the noise. That makes as much sense as moving next to an airport and complaining about that. Yeah. Stupid. You don't like it, move. You know? Or, like, go to bed with earplugs or something, man. But, I mean, you're going to take somebody to court over a freaking rooster? Like, what kind of a pathetic loser are you? You know, this is ri ridiculous. So, anyway, uh, this one has me fuming. Absolutely pissed off here. Woman takes care of her... Paralyzed husband for six years gets dumped after he recovers. Oof. Uh, wow. <coughs> a Malaysian Oof. woman who took care of her bedridden husband for six years following a car accident recently announced that her husband divorced her and married another woman following his recovery. For years, Nurul Suezani documented her daily life as her husband's caretaker on social media, showcasing her busy routine, which included feeding the man through a, nago, uh, through a nasogastric tube changing his diapers and helping him bathe. So this guy was a vegetable. Neural's husband was injured in a car accident and needed six years in order to walk again, during which uh, time she was by his side. Her dedication and dutiful, ser or dutiful service uh, to her husband attracted 32,000 fans on Facebook alone, many of whom were shocked to learn that uh, her husband hadn't only divorced her after having recovered, but also married another woman. They learned of the crazy development from Neural, who congratulated her ex-husband and his new bride in a Facebook post. Wow! What a sleep. What? what a piece of filth. <laughs> Absolute trash that guy is. This poor lady, dude. Like, she is she is giving what love is. You know? And she agreed. She, did I get that right? Congra yeah, year? she congratulated the guy. Oh, Bro, man. you freaking... You're like, no, stand up for yourself, lady. You know, you have every right to you know, tell him to go F himself, you know, because of you is why he's even around anymore, and, and then he just freaking dumps you like that, oh man, I am pissed, I am pissed, dude, this, this guy, he's, hmm, I, 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 I yeah, like to, I'm with you, I just want to talk to him, I just want to talk to him, you know, I just want to talk to him, it's fine, it's fine, I just want to talk to him, yeah, yeah, you know what, I, you know what I'm saying, anyway, what do we got here? 
Uh, okay. uh, <clears throat> 19 year old wannabe doctor walks into London Hospital and treats patients. Whoa. <laughs> That's not good. I knew that DEI wow. was bad, but this is ridiculous. Uh, I think I saw that guy the last time I was in the hospital. I'm not sure. Well, well this was a woman. So. <laughs> oh, okay. A 19-year-old London woman managed to fulfill her dream of being a doctor without, without actually going to medical school simply by walking into a hospital and posing as a physician. Well, if it was that easy, man, mom, you know, didn't even try. Yeah. Like, um, what's her name? Uh, Kruina Zdravoka, a Bulgarian-born woman living in West London's yeah, Ealing district, had always dreamt of becoming a doctor and recently decided that she wasn't going to let a minor detail like lacking any medical training stand in her way. <laughs> oh, no, why would you let that stand in your way? <sighs> Earlier this year, she put a white robe on and some rubber gloves, confidently walked into Ailing Hospital and started acting like one of the physicians there. Throughout the day, she was seen uh, examining uh, medical instruments, getting into an ambulance, and even administrating an unknown substance to a patient without anyone noticing that she wasn't really a doctor. She was so confident that she could pull off her dream job uh, long term that she came back to the hospital three days later, this time with a stethoscope around her neck. You know, well, she got away with it once, you know, try it again. But man, dude, like, th this DEI is just, this is getting out of hand, man. Yeah. Like, that's probably why she got away with it, you know, she's gonna, oh, well, she's, you know, you know, screw credentials, you know, she, she has the right color. I don't know. Wow, can you imagine, that's like, horrible. like, People could die, you know. Well, that's the whole point, man. You don't know what the hell she's doing. Yeah, I don't know. Neither does she. Yeah, you no, know? she does not know what she's doing. Yeah. <laughs> oh, this one kind of pisses me off here, too. Oh. Coming. Hold on. I'm sorry. Go that's ahead. Okay. It's... Uh, more from Audio Central here. A Chinese aquarium sparks controversy with life-size robotic <coughs> whale shark. What? Yeah. A Chinese aquarium has attracted a lot of criticism by replacing its real whale shark with a life-size robotic version that emulates both the look and the movements of the marine animal. And I saw a video about this the other day. You know, people are annoyed. On October 1st, uh, Ziao uh, Maisha Sea World in Shenzhen, China, reopened its gates to visitors after a five-year uh, hiatus for renovations. The 60,000 square meter marine park managed to attract around 100,000 paying visitors in its first week, but that financial success was overshadowed by the controversy around one of the new attractions, a robotic whale shark. According to several Chinese sources, many visitors were disappointed to see that the whale shark swimming in the large aquarium around them was man-made and not the real deal, especially since uh, Zio Maisha Sea World made no effort to inform them beforehand that it had no real sharks. So they're trying to pass off once again. Uh. Right at it doing what they do but he's robot you know yeah, that is that is you know yeah 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 I'd be pissed, yeah. you know, but, you know, then again, I don't go to aquariums because I don't, or zoos, I don't believe in, you know, imprisoning animals, you know, but that's a whole conversation, and yeah, it's a thumbnail, robotic uh, whale shark thumbnail for today's episode here. Yeah, well, I, I'm with you, I don't care for, for zoos or anything, but I also recognize that it's an important way for people to see animals in somewhat of a natural setting. Yeah, well, that was their whole They could never place. experience before. But I don't like it. Yeah. Well, that was the whole point. Now, granted, zoos are nowhere near as abysmal as they were. I mean, oh, you yeah. know. Oh, What uh, we saw. Oh, jeez. Well, when we went and visited the old LA zoo, zoo. And you had that, you had that uh, flashback. That flashback. Oh, that was yeah, yeah, yeah. serious stuff that you experienced there. Yeah, it was. You know. Oh. Uh, well, here we go. Um, the tables have turned. What do we got here, Sir King? Uh, a woman forced to call police after having home besieged by 100 strong raccoon army. What? what? Raccoon surrounded her house and she got scared, so she had to call police. Like, help, I'm wow. surrounded by animals. What do I do? Wow. And, uh, a Washington state woman ended up calling emergency services after her property invaded by around 100 raccoon raccoons acting, strange, uh, acting aggressively and expecting to be fed. Ooh, yikes. Ooh. 100? Don't, don't, don't. don't. 
tackle you. Oh, you raccoons are vicious. Was yeah, she well, feeding them? Well, that's it sounds know. like yeah. yeah. Someone's <laughs> been feeding them. Yeah. And uh, they got cut off and they got pissed. Yeah. Police in Polesbo, a small town in Washington State, got calls about animal related incidents all the time, or they get calls about them all the time. But last week was the first time a local phone 911 report dozens of aggressive raccoons converging on her property and preventing her from entering her own home. The woman, whose name has not been revealed, had been feeding a family of raccoons for about 35 yeah, years. But about six weeks ago, their numbers started growing until it surpassed 100 hungry, 100 hungry rodents all waiting to be fed. The animals started becoming aggressive if they didn't receive food, and things got so bad that the woman couldn't leave her house or move around their property freely. That's scary. Yeah. Don't feed animals. Yeah. You know, uh, like, you're on your own, lady. Yeah. Yeah, you know, like people think that they're doing a good job, you know, that they're helping an animal out of, you know, no, let nature take I'm it. I'm helping. Yeah. You know, like if you see a, if you see a duckling, you know, get, you know, like, like, like fall into a pit, let it go. Because if you go and rescue it, you're teaching it to be reliant on humans and it won't be, you know, more aware of its surroundings and you're, you're crippling it. You are helping it kill itself. Leave nature alone. You know, no matter what, no matter how much good you think you're doing, you're actually doing bad. So just leave it alone. Um, you know, this is this is the end result. You, you think you're doing good, and, and then you get invaded. So, <coughs> what else do we got here? Uh, scenic spot <clears throat> allegedly lets tourists catch wild boars with their bare hands. Ah, uh, yeah. a popular. Oh, uh, that's a good spot. idea. Yeah, that's yeah. I didn't hear what he did. Uh, catch wild boars with yeah. their bare hands. Oh, yeah, I know. That's not the boars in Texas. Not the boars in Texas. Well, this is in China. Yeah. What are the boars like there? I mean, are they... Well, they're still <coughs> big. I mean, here's a picture. Oh, of yeah. They're still boars. Yeah. No. Yeah. yeah. No, that will turn on you and then gore you and eat you. Yeah, yeah. You know? I don't say boars here. No, yeah. it's not. Probably not a good idea. Yeah, no. no. Really bad idea. For the sake of time, we're just uh, going to provide commentary after reading the uh, the headline. So, what do we got here? Gamers operate fake bank branch for ten straight days. Ooh, how really? much? How much do they make? Yeah, that I, was going to be my question. You know, I'm going to I'm going to go back on what I just said and read this. Yeah, Gamers in India managed to set up and operate a fake branch of the country's largest bank, the State Bank of India, for ten days in order to trick people into paying the secured, stable jobs there. Uh, the people of Shirapurur, a village in India's Ch Chhattisgarh state, were surprised to see a branch of the State Bank of India opening up in their modest settlement, but while some were skeptical from the very beginning, many saw it as an opportunity to get a stable, decent-paying job. 25-year-old Pintu Dur was one of the six people who managed to secure employment as a cashier at the newly opened SBI branch, for which he paid 580,000 rupees, or $6,900. Uh, so they're so, scamming people. So he to, paid to, to get buy a, job? a job. Yeah. Wow. So they're scamming people to uh, buy buy a job. I mean, like you know, one of the uh, rules of thumbs of employment that I was told is if you have to wow. buy into it, it's a pyramid scheme. Yeah. Get you away. Know? Run. Yeah. Don't so, walk. Run. Yeah. So. Yep. I I, I hope uh, I hope the the perpetrators you know got caught and they're they're rotting in prison for the rest of existence because this is awful. Yeah, that's taking away from people that really need a job. Yeah. Uh, Oh, this one's interesting. I got to read this one here. A woman files lawsuit to stop paying alimony to 22-year-old daughter. Oh, Jesus. What the hell? Why is she paying alimony to her daughter? What? I don't know. How is that even possible? An Argentinian woman filed a case in uh, family court to be allowed to stop supporting her 22-year-old daughter financially because she neglected her university studies and didn't have a job. Oh, so basically she's trying to get out of paying for an adult child. Like she has, a, she has a moocher for a, for a spawn, it sounds like. Uh, the unnamed woman told family court judge Maria Lara Dumple that her 22-year-old daughter had been enrolled in the National University of Rio Negro since 2020 but had only completed 11% of her studies and had no intention of getting a job. She explained that cutting her child off financially was the best way not to allow her to continue doing nothing with her life. Argentine Civia, or Argentina's <coughs> civil code established the obligation of parents to provide resources to their child until the age of 25, provided that the child cannot support himself or herself 
uh, due to studies that are at work. So they have a law mandating that the parents have to financially support them. Wow, ain't that swanky? <laughs> nice, you yeah. know? But that just creates dependency. Here we go again. So, yeah, I, you know, she she needs to get cut off. You know? Yeah. Um, uh, what do we got here? Alabama couple, 16 foot, 10 inch okra plant might be the world's largest. All right, so that's a pretty tall okra plant. Yeah. Oh uh, yeah. Not real familiar with okra. But... Okra plant that has reached incredible heights. Yeah. It started as a simple hobby for Terry Stevens. Yeah, so basically <coughs> just like you know they're they're growing okra and then they're like, hey, this one's really tall, and they measured it. Ten, ten feet. Yeah. yeah 16, Sixteen feet. feet ten inches. Yeah. Almost Seventeen feet. Yeah. Uh, yeah, an Alabama couple, be it broken, Guinness World, yada, 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 yada. A crew from Baird surveying, surveying visited the couple's home to take an official appointment <coughs> to submit it to Guinness World Records. The plant was measured at 16 feet 10 inches. Uh, the record is currently held by New Orleans man Jack Reno Sweeney, whose okra plant was measured at 16 feet 4 inches tall back in 2022. So, Who ever thought there was a record for okra? There's okra a record plant. for everything. I guess so. Like, you know, <coughs> ask David Rush. Yeah. You know, you can't hush the rush. Oh, what is this? Halloween decorations brews by three black bears. Uh, Bruins. Now, Bruins. I've heard of Bruins. I've heard of Ruins, but what is Bruins? Oh. Or is it supposed it's to be? Ruined. Like, uh, the video shows what unfolded. <coughs> the three young. Bruin. Oh, Bruin bears. Okay. Oh. So they're doing a uh, ruin, ruin, ah, ha, ha, ha. Uh, oh, yeah, is this the video? We're done. <laughs> this, is, this is not the video Bryce here. Bryce did it time and man it. Oh, that's something else. Hold on a second. Uh, this is the video. So, are those real pumpkins? Looks like it. Yeah, they just, you don't even carve your pumpkins. You're just going to have pumpkins yeah. just sitting out there. You lazy. Drink. You know? Hey, decorations, decoration. Yeah. Well, now they're probably going to buy, buy plastic pumpkins, you know. <laughs> uh, what else do we got? Uh, British government issues official passport for Paddington Bear. Ah, marmalade. <laughs> oh. So now Paddington Bear has an actual passport. Yeah. Okay. Oh, cool. That's pretty self-explanatory yeah. there. Yeah. This one is a. Uh... <laughs> Women uses chopsticks to eat one grain of rice at a time. Sets Guinness record. Wow. So just. Uh, what? Sumaya Khan, uh, Khan, at the age of 24, Khan! told Guinness World Records she has been using chopsticks to eat all of her meals for a few years, yada, yada, yada. A co worker took note of Khan's rice eating skills. And suggested she might be able to break the record for the most rice grains eaten in one minute using chopsticks, which previously stood at 27. Okay, so you know, eating a, one one grain of rice yeah. at a time and with chopsticks. Over 27 grains. So well, she got to 37. Okay, so, there you go. Yeah, so Little she beat it by 10. Over once again. Whoop de doo! You can eat rice in a very unique and strange way. Congratulations. Moving on, what do we have here? Flush. Candy wrappers block sewer officials stress the three P's. Who's flushing their candy wrappers? <laughs> what are you doing? Well, like you're eating Halloween well, candy and then you just well, like. Because you, you don't the want the parents to know they're eating candy, do I? I don't know where that is. Is there no trash can on the way to the toilet? What the hell's wrong with you? There but, is but, but no look trash. At that. Oh, okay. No Yikes. evidence. <laughs> hey, carbs don't count if you flush them, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I can drink Diet Coke. Now I can eat anything. Because uh, that's how it works. Uh, England's that's Southern Water is reminding <laughs> residents to only flush the three P's down the toilet after sewer blockage was identified as a stash of candy wrappers. The three P's were pee, poo, and what's, what else? People? Know. Like, <laughs> pee, poo, and what? What's the three P's? I don't know what the third one was. Oh, paper. Paper? Okay. Oh, paper. Yeah. Um, yeah, okay. Well, I mean, like, you know, candy wrappers, candy papers, yeah. like, you know. Yeah. Well, don't move, flush candy move wrappers! On, move on, that, That's, uh, that's that, a shitty story. <laughs> hold, on, hold on a second. I, I have to do this. <laughs> what do we got here? 
Shakespeare book returned to New Jersey Library after a hundred years old. Ooh, that's hell of a vine. Are you kidding me? Well, see, I'm wondering if there was a problem with the Dewey Decimal System. Was it to be or not to be? Oh, boy. <laughs> Yeah. Oh. But yeah, that's pretty self-explanatory right there. Oh. And uh, last but not least, what is this? Swiss twins break into world records for synchronized inline skating. Yeah, they break two records. So, um, yeah, so uh, what is it, twins? So, that's pretty cool. Oh, that's awesome. Dude! Huh. Me. My name is... That's awesome. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, but, uh, I'm going to wrap us up here. I'll conclude the show once again. Please check the underbar in the description below for any links to you that you may be interested in, including but not limited to all things on the coalition. For your dose of different, odd, and unusual news, aka notable events, weather, and sports, we stream every Friday at 4 p.m. Pacific Time, which is 5 Mountain, 6 Central, and 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, respectively. We do have other shows from history to news, movie reactions to reviews, video memes on the kitchen, and everything else in between. On Talk Show, check the underbar. For all of you and all of us, I am A.O. Xander. King's Refuge. Golden Loon. And you are you, viewer. Thanks so much for watching. And until you catch us next time, whenever that is, wherever that is, don't forget to look right and left at every intersection. <clears throat> right five thumbs and subscribe. Toodles. Deuces.